I didn't realize you were uh, there <clears throat> during my private reflection period. Anyway, since I have you here, I've had a lot of requests from people who want information about books that I'd recommend to them. So I figured I'd make a quick video recommending some books to you. Let's get started. All right, so the first book I want to recommend to you is a book called Empire of the Summer Moon by a guy named S.C. Gwynn. This book is absolutely fantastic. I've recommended it on a bunch of videos already. So if you are interested in the American West, there's probably no better book for you to start with. So begin with that. Second book I recommend is American Buffalo by Steve Rinella. Now, if you're a fan of the show Meat Eater, that's the same guy, okay? He's got a great podcast, great show. He's got a bunch of good books. This book of his is my absolute favorite. So if you're into the American West in particular, if you're into bison, if you're into hunting, any of that stuff, this is definitely the book I'd most recommend for that. Another great book is called Blood and Thunder by a guy named Hampton Sides. This book's really interesting because it's sort of a story of Kit Carson, but it tells the story of the West kind of surrounding Kit Carson. So if you're into mountain man history, if you're into the history of sort of like the classic sort of wild west, this is a book that kind of bridges that gap, sort of showing how it all came to be. And it's just an amazing look at Kit Carson as well. So definitely check that one out. The next book is called The Last Stand by Nathaniel Philbrick. And Philbrick is one of my absolute favorite authors. The book The Last Stand of course covers a little Bighorn and Custer's Last Stand there, but it's a neat sort of build up to everything going on that led up to The Last Stand. And as far as like the battle itself, I haven't personally come across a better book on the subject. On the same topic, there's another book called Crazy Horse and Custer by Stephen E. Ambrose. Ambrose, if you don't know, he's pretty fantastic as well. Ambrose wrote Undaunted Courage, I believe, which is another great book, and this one on, that one on uh, Lewis and Clark. But uh, personally, I love this Custer book, it's great. And so this book's really neat because it, it, it talks a lot about Native American history uh, sort of leading up to that battle as well. And that's something that I think Philbrick's a little light on in his The Last Stand book. So if you are more into the Native American perspective but also into the Custer perspective, I definitely recommend that one. Another book I gotta recommend is The Old West in Fact and Film by Jeremy Agnew. Now if you watch my videos, you probably have seen this book come up in probably almost all of my videos. I use this book constantly. It's sort of my go-to book on the history of the American West. It's got a bunch of just little details about how things were done back then. I'm like, why did they do this? Why did they do that? Did they really do this? That's what this book covers. So it kind of contrasts what Hollywood always gets wrong with what actually happened. So can't recommend that one enough. Another great Jeremy Agnew book is called Life of a Soldier on the Western Frontier. And I actually just read this book for the first time about two months ago, and I was really blown away by it, right? The level of detail in, in this book is, is just astounding. And, and it's neat because it's similar to the same book, right, uh, Old West in fact the film, but it's different in that it just focuses on soldiers on the Western Frontier. So if you've ever wondered, you know, how did they sleep? What do they eat? How do they do their laundry, right? All these little details this book covers it. So I definitely think if you are interested in that sort of thing, you'll really like that book. The last book I want to recommend on the West is a book called Draw by James Reasoner. Now I bought this book when I was in high school, I think maybe 20 to 25 years ago, uh, but I probably read it about 12 times since I originally bought it. It's really just a neat collection of stories of gunfights in the West. So if you're looking for something that, you know, it's nothing that dives too deep, it's just a really entertaining look at sort of gunfighting and, and, and that sort of side of the West, be sure to check that one out. Now some of these books don't really fit within the classic American West period, so I want to make sure though I still recommend them because they're kind of on the periphery. So the first book I want to recommend in this category is Eric J. Dolan's book, Fur, Fortune, and Empire. It's a great book. I personally love it. I think it's the best book on the subject of fur trading history, but it is dense. It's a heavy book. Right? It takes a long time to read, there's just a bunch of details in it, but I don't think there's any book on the fur trade that does a better job of sort of encapsulating the entire thing. And it's really entertaining. So I definitely would say you should start there. Now the second book I want to recommend is called The Voyageurs by Grace Lee New. Now if you're not familiar with who the Voyageurs are, right, they played a big part in the fur trade. These are the guys with canoes, primarily up in Canada, who'd be transporting canoes into the supplies around the system of lakes and rivers and so forth. The book's a little quirky, but I absolutely love it. It's a fun book, it's a fun read. If you are interested in the subject, definitely read it. And if you aren't interested in it, you should still read it because it gives you a really well-rounded view of the fur trade. Another book I love is called Boone, A Biography by Robert Morgan. So if you're into sort of early American hunting history, really this is probably the best book on the subject, right? Daniel Boone is probably the best hunter that America ever produced. So if you are interested in that, right, the book sort of focuses on 
him hunting in like North Carolina, but also in Kentucky, and then eventually moving uh, to Missouri. So it's a neat look at sort of the opening up of the West when the West was much farther east. Uh, but again, if you're into hunting, if you're into American history, it's a really cool book. And, you know, it's on Daniel Boone. He's awesome. Next book i got to recommend is Crow Killer, The Saga of Liberty Eating Johnson. Now, I don't want to give too much about this book away, but it's a really great book on a mountain man. And it's a true story. Now, if you've seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson, and if you have it, you need to go and watch it right now. That movie is more so a fictionalized account of the true story of Liberty Eating Johnson. So if you do enjoy that movie, you're definitely going to like this book. And if you're into Mountain Man stuff, you're going to like the book anyway. It's just a cool story. Now, if you're into the gold rush, there's no better book than The Klondike Stampede by Tap and Adney. Now, Tap and Adney was a reporter who went up there on the gold rush, saw everything firsthand, and wrote this story, wrote this book about it. Now, I really love this book because it talks about individual characters that he meets, talks about all the hardships that they endured, and it gives you just little insights on things about, like, again, what they ate, what they drank, what they paid for all that stuff. It's just a really cool book with a lot of great detail in it. Now, one of my new favorite books is called Trails of a Wilderness Wanderer, and it's by a guy named Andy Russell. Now, it's not a new book, it's just new to me. I think it came out in like the 1960s. It's somebody being a mountain man about a hundred years after the mountain man. You know, if you're into sort of that kind of stuff, if you're into nature and, and, and some history involved and mountain men and all that, uh, it's a really good book on the topic. Another great book is called One Man's Wilderness by a guy named Dick Prinicky. Now, Some of you have probably seen different YouTube videos and, and documentaries with snippets of this guy. Uh, he basically left Iowa, moved up to Alaska, and built his own log cabin up in Twin Lakes. And the book sort of chronicles the building of that cabin and him living up there. And he lived up there for decades. So it's just, it's, it's a really neat, sort of more modern book. I think, again, it takes place in, in like the, the 60s and the 70s and beyond. Uh, but you, if you are interested in sort of escaping into nature and you want to kind of read about a guy that actually did it in his own words, uh, there's probably no better book than, than that one on the top. Now, according to my YouTube analytics, I think about 98% of my viewers are male. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you might be interested in better understanding yourself as a man, especially in taking sort of historical masculine wisdom from the past, seeing how you might be able to apply some of that stuff today. So here's some books on historical masculinity that I personally really like that you guys might enjoy as well. The first book I gotta recommend is From Boys to Men of Heart by Randall Eaton. This book absolutely blew my mind. Okay, this is a book that talks about sort of male rites of passage throughout time, uh, particularly through hunting, and even how to use hunting today to sort of create a male rite of passage. It's just a phenomenal book, packed with all sorts of great history and tons of scientific data. I can't recommend this book enough. Another great book is called The Way of Men by Jack Donovan. I love this book, I think it's phenomenal. It's a short book, it's a really quick read. I think I've read it like 10 times. It's not very long, but it's, it's really, it's just a phenomenal book. Uh, he has another book called, uh, I think it's called Becoming a Barbarian, and it's about the importance of male bonding and forming male groups, uh, which is another really good one. But I definitely would start first with The Way of Men and then kind of work away from there. Another book I've got to recommend is called Wild at Heart by a guy named John Eldridge. And I think this book came out maybe 20 years ago, and it was pretty popular at the time. Uh, but I read it about 10 years ago, and it had a really big positive impact on me. I, I dug it. Um, it's a book that has sort of a Christian perspective on, on masculinity. And so it, it takes a Christian perspective about finding your purpose and about the need for adventure. And a lot of it overlaps with nature and hunting and all that too. So I don't know, like I said, I, it had a huge impact on me. I really love the book a lot. I've read it several times and I think you guys would really like it. Another really good book is called The Way of the Superior Man by David Dita. Uh, this book primarily focuses on masculinity, but within a relationship. And it's really helped me uh, sort of understand things better within my own relationship. And so, you know, if, if you're looking to understand masculinity better and, and sort of apply it today within your relationship in a really positive way, um, it's hard to beat that book. Another book I just recently read, and I really liked it, is called The Complete Gentleman by a guy named Brad Miner. Now, this book is a great look at sort of the, the history of chivalry and, and sort of masculinity in, in that sense. So if you're into like medieval history, it's got a whole bunch of awesome medieval information about sort of what it meant to be a man back then. 
and a lot of the stuff even gets applied to modern day as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can take from it that's, that's really useful. So anyway, I recently read the book, I really liked it, and uh, I recommend it. Alright, last book I gotta recommend, and I just finished this one today actually, and I thought it was really good, so I wanted to include it on this. It's called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. This book was written by a couple authors, and one of them is a professor of, I believe, psychology. But it's, it's a really neat book that talks about sort of the historical masculine archetypes and sort of how those are manifested today. It's a pretty sort of heavy psychological look at it, but I do like and I do appreciate that they use a whole bunch of history within it as well, and that's kind of what got me into it initially. I think the more of these books you can read, the more perspectives you get, and you know, some of these ideas in different books might resonate more than another book, right? Like you might read John Elridge's book and think, wow, you know, like that really resonates. The more of these you read, you're like, wow, that resonates too. Maybe that resonates too. And that's just kind of the neat part of, of, of reading all this stuff is you get to compare and contrast them, see which one kind of fits within your, your own sort of paradigm and, uh, you know, apply some of those lessons that, that they give you in the books. I just think it's interesting, you know, understanding historical masculine responsibilities and virtues, right? Like what were those virtues? What did they value the most? And, and you know, how did men achieve those virtues and how did they cultivate them and embody them and all that? So, you know, it's it's an ongoing study and uh, it's good to learn more about yourself and these books kind of help you get there. And I think they might help you guys as well. So anyway, thanks for sticking around this whole time. You folks have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. Hello. <coughs> while while you're here. What? I'm not very good at keeping this pipe lit. Before we take off, I just want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. So special thanks to my gold tier patrons, Tyler Bow, Shock Rodriguez, Ash the Gertson, The Innocents, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce V, Cyber, Greg Swag, Jerker Rosen, Chasing Victory, Joshua Vale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Dawson E, Zom Freezes, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Saul Goodman, Sneak Ninja, Noah 5943, John Golly, Jitsai, Your Pal Mitch, Yinzian, Big Old Bear, Old Hog Nose, and Arthur Hansen. And of course, I have to thank my silver and bronze gear patrons. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. Let's keep growing. Let's keep doing what we're doing.